All right, with the quorum present, we'll call this meeting in order. Uh, this is our regular scheduled meeting for June 23rd. We'll start with a word of prayer and a pledge. Uh, Chad, you lead us in the uh, prayer, and Ronald, you lead us in the pledge afterwards. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, and thank you for your blessings. And Father, we just pray this day that you give us wisdom and lead us in all that we do, that it would glorify and honor you and better this community. Father, we praise you this day. We thank you for life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, gentlemen, in front of you, you got a copy of the minutes of the previous meeting. If there's no additions, changes, or deletions, we'll have a motion to approve the minutes. Motion to approve. I got Second a motion it. to approve and a second. Any discussion on the minutes? Seeing no discussion, if you're in favor of approving the minutes, let me know by saying aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, and minutes are approved. Uh, real quick announcement uh, uh, Monday, July 4th, uh, the city offices will be closed. And uh, I'll let Chris elaborate on the fireworks show if you have anything to do during your portion of it. So, Chris, I'll turn the table over for, to you for your portion. Thank you. Uh, the fireworks show is scheduled for Monday, July the 4th, uh, as always at uh, Bobby Brewer Park. Uh, should be just right after dark. Uh, we're still waiting on the state to return our permit, but we don't think there'll be a problem with that. They're running behind this year. Mm -hmm. But uh, the fireworks uh, show is scheduled for the 4th of uh, Rotary Park. <laughs> Rotary Park. I'm sorry, Bobby Brewer Park. <laughs> <coughs> also, Jay and I uh, met with Jerry Reynolds earlier this week. Uh, Jerry's finalizing the plans for Station 1 renovations. Uh, we looked at the blueprints. We've made a few uh, modifications where we think we can save a little bit of money, and we expect that to be out for bid probably within the next week or so. Uh, so we'll be getting some numbers back on that, uh, you know, I, and we hope on a short period of time. Um, Doug Edwards, Judy Hartsfield, and I also attended two meetings this week. One was at Hillside Hospital with uh, Jenny Dorflinger Golden, uh, the new drug liaison, uh, drug coalition liaison. We met on prescription drug problems uh, in the workplace. It was very informative and gave us some ideas on how to continue to fight those types of problems. Uh, we also went to Columbia and met with a company that gave us some ideas on the possibility of moving to a self-funded insurance program. The details are still a little sketchy at this time, but gave us an idea of, of some plans that we could implement that might result in some savings by going to a, a self-insured program. Uh, yesterday we had a meeting with MTAS over traffic engineering uh, section of MTAS regarding E.O. Kaufman traffic flow and safety issues. MTAS recommended a new pattern of dropping off students uh, and bus pickup that they felt would uh, help keep the students safe and would keep traffic moving on Lafayette a little bit better. Uh, the school superintendent was in attendance. Uh, the mayor was also here, T.R. Williams, lots of other representatives in it. Everybody agreed that it seemed to be a, a very good plan that would keep the students safe, so hopefully we'll be working with the school and implementing that as well. So there may be some new procedures for the drop-off and pick up the students at E.O. Kaufman, but we'll certainly let the school roll those plans out and inform teachers if and when that becomes available. I'd also like to congratulate two of our employees, Jake Beckman and Raymond Chavez, who are graduating the Police Academy tomorrow. Been, been at uh, Tennessee Law Enforcement Training Academy and will be graduating tomorrow. So I uh, look forward to those guys being back on the streets and joining the police department. And that is all I had this morning for our department manager report. Gary Wayne's here. He's going to talk to us a little bit about the uh, rolling out of the front load equipment that should be uh, in place, I think, this week, next week. If you'll go ahead and fill us in on that, we can. We've been setting and delivering docks for a third week, and I hope by the end of this week we'll have 200 set. Uh, we've hit very few snags. Some of the pins are real tight, tighter than we like it. And there's a few power lines that's got in the way, but we're, we're working 
through it. It's just taking a little bit of time to, to get everything done. And, uh, it, it'll probably take us three to four more weeks to get it all set up and complete. So, but we are running a new front load truck <coughs> every day. And we've got the restaurants and grocery stores you know, people that deal with food waste and stuff. So we've got all those set. We are running them out every day. With one of those trucks. And I'm still having to run the rear load drive. So once we get over the halfway point, I can shut one rear loader down. Hopefully we can make more progress with the front load deal. How are people receiving it? Are the businesses okay with it for the most part? Very few com the complaints we've had, people think that especially the ones that have three yard dumpsters, the ones we're replacing it with, they think are smaller, but they're not. You get the same square foot. So that's that's the only thing that's been said. Everybody else is is tickled with it. it. It seems to be working fine. And we had as far as the pickup and everything, we haven't had any control. It's just taking us a little bit longer to get all of them set. A lot of them you can look at. It's a lot of cheap. Thank you, Gary. Anything else, Chris? That's all I have, sir. Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, being that it's been so dry and it looks like the long, the immediate range forecast is continuing to be dry uh, through July, first week of July, are we going to do any public service announcements for the, uh, on fireworks and being extremely careful about? fires and things like that. Have you thought anything about that, Jay? You do that during this time? We do when it gets better in fireworks time. It's dry like this. Okay. Thank you. All right, so Chris, uh, <clears throat> I don't know if this has already been done or not, but um, uh, I don't know where to start other than getting in test to come down here because the state's going to require some type of traffic study, but we've got to have something on the intersection of US 64 and US 43 at the new bypass. That is, I, I, I witnessed almost one of the worst. They didn't have an accident, but I, I can't believe it wasn't an accident. And uh, it's just, it's something bad waiting to happen right there. There's already been a couple accidents, but we've got to have some traffic lights there or something in that intersection. There's no way to, to ingress onto US 43 from 64. It's the most dangerous thing I've ever seen. So. We can get John to do some official study on that. I know when he was here for the coffin, we, we looked at that and he, I guess he put on his radar, but he had so many other projects scheduled, he was not able to commit to that at that time. But he said he likes to come to Lawrenceburg, looks forward to working with us. So we'll see if we can get him to come down and prepare an official plan for us. Yeah, we need to move that up the list. Okay. So. All right. Anything else? Mr. Betts, I'll turn the table over to you for a legal business. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we need to have a public hearing on Ordinance 1175 today. It's an ordinance to amend Ordinance Number 789 entitled Zoning Ordinance of the City of Lawrenceburg. This is to rezone property located on the east side of Quail Drive and south side of Pulaski Highway to uh, uh, R uh, C3 from R1. Would anyone care to address the board concerning Ordinance 1175 today? <clears throat> I don't see anyone that's here to uh, address that, Mayor, so we'll close the public hearing. Okay. Ordinance 1175 is an ordinance to amend ordinance number 789 entitled the Zoning Ordinance of the City of Lawrenceburg. This is to rezone the property uh, on uh, Quail Drive and the south side of Pulaski Highway to C3 from R1. It's based on a recommendation of the Planning Commission. The notice has been held and the public hearing has been held. Uh, it's here for second and final reading today. Motion to approve. I've got a motion to approve. Second. And a second. Any discussion on this ordinance? All right. Seeing no uh, discussion, if you're in favor, let me know by saying aye. Aye. And opposed. And this ordinance is approved. 
Next, Ordinance 1176, an ordinance to amend Ordinance 1161 entitled Budget Appropriations of Revenue and Expenditures for the 15-16 fiscal year for the City of Lawrenceburg. <clears throat> this is to add $30,000 uh, TEMA Disaster Assistance Fund to the budget, uh, and that's here for second and final reading today. Mr. Gentlemen, what's your pleasure on this ordinance? Motion to approve. We've got a motion to approve. Second. And a second. Uh, any discussion? Uh, seeing no discussion, if you're in favor of ordinance number 1176, let me know by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? And that ordinance is approved. Next gentleman, ordinance 1177, an ordinance to amend 1161 entitled Budget Appropriations of Revenue Expenditures for the 15 16 fiscal year. This is to add. Uh, $173.32 fund balance uh, in the revenues for the uh, annual appropriations to the Joint Economic and Community Development Board. That's here for first reading today. Motion to approve. Got a motion to approve. Second. Second. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. All right, seeing no discussion, if you're in favor of this ordinance, let me know by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that ordinance moves to second reading. <coughs> Next, a resolution of the Board of Mayor and Council of the City of Lawrenceburg to authorize a consultant selection policy <coughs> in accordance with Federal Highway Administration or the Tennessee Department of Transportation for projects that use federal funding. Uh, and that's for your consideration today. All right, gentlemen, what's your pleasure on this? Motion to resolution. I've got a motion to approve. <coughs> Do you want to bring this to discussion before we uh, take a motion on it? Consider a motion. I'll second it. All right, I got a second. We'll bring it to discussion. Yeah, explain the reason behind it. All right, Chris, you got uh, Yes, Joe Baxter and I attended uh, attended these uh, training, the CEI training required by TDOT, and they asked us about our written policies that we had in place as far as the choosing of engineering firms uh, and professional services when it comes to projects that that receive uh, Federal Highway Administration or TDOT funding. They said it's a, a must that we have a written policy in place. This is their model policy that, that a lot of cities use. I talked to uh, the engineering company we, we currently use on a lot of projects, Griggs and Maloney. Uh, I talked to Phil. He said he is familiar with this, this actual form and uh, had no issues with it, said that if you want to use TDOT money or Federal Highway uh, Administration money, there's a requirement. So we just uh, opted to adopt what the state recommended on this. But this is not asking us to do ask for more consulting services other than what we've been doing already anyway, is it? What, it, what it's asking for is that we on different projects that we at least accept requests for qualifications. Uh, on professional services, you don't have to bid that out, but they do recommend reviewing other qualifications of other agency or other uh, other firms to make sure that we're getting the best that we can get. So that's what this is. It just tells us the, uh, the guidelines that we're looking for when we, when we do submit these uh, requests for qualifications. Kind of like I'm turning a resume. Yes. The reason I was concerned about it is because anytime you start talking about consulting, you get into more money. You know, I just want to be careful how we spend this money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've got my own opinions, but I'm keeping it myself. <laughs> I don't. <All> right. <laughs> Any uh, any further discussion on this resolution? All right, seeing no further discussion, I do have a motion and a second to approve it. If you're in favor of that, let it be known by saying aye. Uh, aye. aye. And opposed. And that, that resolution is approved. Next, a resolution of the Board of Mayor and Council of the City of Lawrenceburg to create internal control guidelines in accordance with procedures required by the Comptroller's Office of the State of Tennessee. Uh, I believe Linda has uh, taken the model policy and uh, 
adopted it for uh, a use by the city of Lawrenceburg, and that's for your consideration today. <coughs> Does this take place of the policy we already have in place? We don't currently have an actual policy. The state of Tennessee has asked all, all government entities to come up with an internal <coughs> control assessment or policy, and it, it's just setting up about what you do in your daily business. So what do we follow today? The state policy? Well, we just never actually had it in writing. I mean, we have policy that we follow, like segregation of duties and right. all that kind of stuff in so place already. Local policy, it's that? just this one's in writing. We've never had an official written policy. That's what this basically this is creating, adopting the, the rules we already have in place, with placing it in a written form, okay. and, and making sure that it's in compliance with the the comptroller's regulations. Is it basically the same as you carry out? Yeah, there's a few things that we've added to it that we're gonna we're gonna step up and change, but for our better or for our worse? For better, for our worse. it's it's just <laughs> you got to hire you got to hire a person to go check the mail, and somebody else got to open the mail, and somebody else got to lick the mail, and somebody else got to. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most crazy thing I've ever seen. <laughs> so, but I, we've I, been asked to make one, and we've made one. So, okay. and it's a work in progress. It will change, but right now this is. A good starting point. What is the green book that states in here? The green book states documentation is management's responsibility. What is the green book? It's kind of the authority on internal control as the state of Tennessee sees it. It's a manual that someone no, has might, uh, wrote mm -hmm. down. How does the state know what we're doing down here that's best for us when we don't know what's best for the state or vice versa? No, they don't. They actually do know what's best for us at the council. Do they? Yes, sir. Because they, they're the ones that make the rules. Well, I understand that. <laughs> <right? laughs> the rules are not always very good once I can find it. That's the, but anyway, there's a whole lot here. Can we take time to read this before we act on it? Do we have time? Yeah. Uh, I'll, cons you? I'll consider that as a, if you want to make that a motion, we'll, we'll consider that. We do have a motion on did I get a motion on this too? Yeah, I did. Yeah, you did. I got a motion to approve right now, but I will, will entertain any other motions. You want to make one? We got to do it anyway. We got to do it anyway. Do what? If we got a motion, I slept through it. Well, I think no, we, we didn't get a motion, Mayor. We, uh, we Linda started telling us about it. Okay, motion. that's right. I started the conversation, didn't I? <laughs> So I don't have a motion. Gentlemen, this is this is basically a uh, policy adherence to try to stay on the good graces of the state controller. Mm -hmm. and that's what it. Linda's trying to do. If you want to just put it, it's supposed to be passed by you guys by June 30th. Well, today's the day. So, I mean, and, and there's not that's when anything. We'll come back next week. <laughs> yeah. It's all just the basic of what we already do and why we do it. It's right. just how to protect the city from fraud and from. You know. I, I guess that was my question because you know we we got these things in place that allow that you know we already have one person doing this and carrying it here and another person doing it. and I thought that was all state mandated. It is. Policy in place. It is like if you receive money, you've got to have it in the bank in so many days, and you know you don't endorse checks and give them to other people. And there's just things we do now, and this is just written down, saying this is what the city of Lawrenceburg is doing. Mayor, I think that all of you had to do all those things that we're doing, and then the states come back and says, "Now you write it down what you're doing." What you I'm, not, I'm not arguing that fact. I'm just saying I thought we were already doing all that, and we are doing that stuff. It says, it says in the summary that we can change it to fit the city. Well, if you have less people, you have to do it differently. If you have more people, you can do it differently. That's how you change it. Motion to approve. Second. All right. We've got a motion and second. Any further discussion on this? All right. If you're in favor of this resolution, let me know by saying aye. Aye. And opposed. And that resolution is approved. Good. Good comments, though, guys. Don't let that deter you. <laughs> yeah. Good. Resolution of the Board of Mayor and Council of the City of Lawrenceburg to reappoint Shane Hughes to the Board of Public Utilities. His uh, term to expire June 30th, 2020. 
We got a motion to approve second. and a second. We'll bring this to discussion. Seeing none, if you're in favor, uh, let me know by saying aye. 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 And opposed? And that's approved. Next gentleman, a resolution of the Board of Mayor and Council of the City of Lawrenceburg to authorize Lawrenceburg <coughs> Public Works Department to request bids for a culvert for Granddaddy Road. Uh, there was an error in the one that's on the agenda um, that this is the Granddaddy Road is what uh, the actual culvert request is about. So that's for your consideration today. Okay. Got a motion to approve and second. I'd rather have a buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, any other discussion on this, or any discussion on it? Does everybody know where this is? What we're talking about? It's right when you uh, get off the curve heading into Richardson Acres, and uh, the road's fixing to fall in there because the culvert's giving way. So. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Uh, if you're in favor of this, let me know by saying aye. Aye. And opposed? And that, no, that resolution is approved. That's all my business, Mayor. I do got, have an announcement to uh, make. The uh, uh, Our local Babe Ruth organization is going to host the 13 and the 14 year old Babe Ruth State tournaments starting uh, July the 15th. Going to do them at the same time. at. Uh, uh, the 13's on Tom Cruise Field and the 14's on uh, Denver Trap Field. And uh, just want to give you guys uh, uh, another big pat on the back. Uh, we really have an outstanding facility up there. It would have never been possible without the City of Lawrenceburg stepping up to make it what it is. And <coughs> the, the compliments that we've had on the facilities this year, are just you know, they just keep going. And it's something we've got really to be really to be proud of yeah the fields look really good they the, the maintenance guys have really poured their hearts into it it's not just a, a job it's a labor of love for them so if you see those guys let them know that you appreciate them because they've done a heck of a job i agree with you Alan. all right any other uh business for the city of Lawrenceburg from the council i like a motion that we uh, uh let the slim down in health ronald fox throw out the first pitch <laughs> on behalf of the council I can't. Uh, you can handle it this year. I, I'd have to go to Little Lake distance. I can't <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Talking about baseball, uh, you know, Alan done a great job. Babe, at, at Babe Ruth, Cal Ripken's trying to follow some of that model, and we've already started making some improvements to the ball fields up there. Uh, still got a long way to go, but we're getting there. Uh, we too are hosting a state tournament this year. It's the ten-year-old state tournament, July eighth, the weekend before. Babe Ruth hosts their right. state tournament, so. <coughs> Uh, we're going to have about 10 teams of 10-year-olds coming in, so going to be an exciting weekend. Also, um, our 6-year-olds, our 7-year-olds, our 10-year-olds, and our 12-year-olds all won their district tournament last weekend. Um, so it's pretty neat to see those 4 age groups do really well. Our 8s finished runner-up, uh, so excited for them. So it's been a good year at Cal Ripken Baseball also. Absolutely. Great. Coach, Most, White, Coach White should be excited. Got it coming. Motion to adjourn. I got a motion to adjourn and a second. This meeting's adjourned.